Hello, Santa. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you for talking to me. We're having this conversation probably five years before I was expecting to have it. Ah, uh, you mean that's not possible because I could only stay here for 10 years, so maybe three years before. Nice to see you and um, this opportunity that we have this morning to really talk about sort of reflections on your time at UBC. And when you arrived, you had a real agenda in your mind, but you took your time to meet people and sit down and come up with some strategy. So can you talk about your priorities that you set early on? Well, I'd say, as, as you recall, uh, when I arrived, um, things were a little bit tumultuous here. And so one of my first uh, objectives was to try to calm the institution down and for it to, to help it heal. Um, and we were very fortunate that Martha Piper was here for 10 months before my arrival. And she had done a great job beginning that process. And so in the first, uh, I would say, uh, term of my time at UBC, I really spent a lot of time interacting with people on both campuses across each of the faculties. And it was really an invigorating time for me to get to know a lot of people um, and to just to feel the energy of the place. So that was my very first priority was to, to meet people, to understand uh, where the institution was and to understand its soul because every institution is different. Um, and also to build a team and to start to build the strategic plan as, as we know it today. There were a number of priorities that were set right off the bat. Um, the Indigenous Strategic Plan. That's right. Taking action on climate, um, mental health as a priority, and then anti-racism. On each of those four files, how do you assess your own performance in terms of getting those things started? Well, it's not my performance. Everything that's been accomplished has been the entire university community. And for each of those, I can point to a number of people who have played leadership roles. And so I'm really grateful for them and for the entire community for coming together and to ideate together and to co-create the overall strategic plan, but each of those plans. And I'm incredibly proud of what the university has accomplished. Um, you know, as I go around and travel around the world and talk to other institutional leaders and to, to department heads and deans, they all know what we have accomplished together here at UBC. Um, you probably know that the Indigenous Strategic Plan is considered to be sort of the standard globally. Uh, the Climate Action Plan and our leadership of UC3, the University Climate Change Coalition, is admired globally. Um, and our recently completed um, ARI Task Force Report, Anti-Racism Inclusive Excellence, is also considered to be a standard uh, that is emulated around the world. So I'm really proud of what the university community has accomplished during our time together. Why are comparisons to other universities important to you as the leader of this place? Uh, it's important to me because UBC is a globally recognized institution. It should be leading. It should be leading Canada. It should be leading the world. And the fact that uh, the institution is recognized for that is something that I have great pride in. Um, I would say if, if you think about the um, Climate Action Plan and the declaration of the climate emergency, that was a place where we were actually a little bit behind. And it's really the advocacy and energy and passions of the faculty, staff, and students that were really pushing us to do something. I credit them. Um, they are really the reason why we've moved as quickly as we have. And there's much more to do. Um, but the fact that we've actually made quite a bit of progress during this time uh, is something that I'm proud of, proud of for them for ha having accomplished that. One thing I've really noticed is um, the priority that's been put on relationships. I think about University of uh, British Columbia in the Okanagan yeah, yeah. and how much more involved um, the Okanagan campus is um, now in the day-to-day -day operations of UBC. How have you had time to develop the kind of relationships that you've developed in these past six years? Well, the Okanagan uh, campus is gonna become more and more important moving into the future. You can see it. Um, I can tell you that if you look at the research trajectory of UBC writ large, it wouldn't have been uh, possible for that trajectory to have been achieved without the growth and research uh, portfolio there. One of the objectives that I had when I first arrived was to reach out to the Okanagan campus. And uh, I'm very proud of what they have accomplished during the, the past six and a half years. And I think moving forward, they're gonna play an even more important role. Um, you've made people 
a priority. You've got a close group that you have um, developed really tight relationships with. But these broader groups, mobilizing conversations, going and talking to people when they've been upset, um, when changes need to be made, coming to some sort of decision. How have you been able to do that at this university? And what did you learn here that you'll take forward with you to Michigan? Well, I'd say that the credit goes to the people. You know, you can't do that at every institution. Uh, UBC is an interactive place. It's a place where people are comfortable being honest with you. Sometimes it's not always pleasant, but that's fine because that's part of um, a leader's responsibility to hear about what he or she uh, can do better. Yeah, I can tell you that individuals provide great ideas um, that I have latched onto. Um, and I think some of those ideas that have come from those relationships have been some of the uh, that some of the steps that I'm most proud of um, during my time here. So things that you could not have predicted, the transit hoo-ha, the pandemic, um, these are huge issues that affected people around the world. What was your vantage point here at UBC? Um, what was its uh, effect on your ability to read these situations? How, how did this affect your ability to understand what was happening elsewhere in the world? You know, the push for the extension of the Broadway line to UBC has been going on for a long time. Um, and I, I've learned that from talking to leaders from the past who have either supported it or actually been opposed to it. And so um, that has taken many years of my time here to get to the place where it seems like it's, it's about to happen. And I'm very, very happy uh, about that. And, you know, I'm really very fortunate to have a great team uh, that has worked with me to get us to where we are. And I can't wait for those stations to open, uh, it, hopefully in the not too distant futures. You, you had another another part. The, the pandemic visiting itself uh, upon you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on all of us. Yeah, on all of us. Um, and certainly that has been very difficult, um, you know, in post-secondary, but in every sector. It's had an in, incredible impact, especially on our students and uh, those in high school, who, who were not able to, to graduate with a normal celebration, who weren't able to enter our campuses uh, as they typically would. And that's starting to return now as we speak, knock on wood. But that um, has been probably the most difficult part of my presidency is to try to navigate this ship. You know, the, the, the first year or so was incredibly scary. And this is something that unfolded on every university campus. Uh, you know, it, it, there was no playbook. It really required a, a lot of diplomacy to be able to I interact with uh, public health leaders and uh, other governmental leaders at the federal level as well as the provincial level. I'm incredibly grateful for all the experts at uh, UBC and the entire community for uh, working with me. Uh, I'm actually pretty proud of how we navigated it. There's um, people who feel, feel that we did things the right way, other people who feel that we could have done something slightly different. But if you actually look at it from, from a distance, as a lot of people have who have spoken with me, they think we've done pretty well, and hopefully it continues that way. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, you and I had many conversations about mental health, and you were very quickly concerned about how the pandemic and the isolation of being at home was going to affect students. Um, how do you think the university did in terms of meeting the needs of students? The data clearly sh show that the impact on students is enormous. Uh, and we're not out of the woods. This is kind of the beginning of that tidal wave, if you will. And so to answer your question, UBC has done a lot. And I've really detailed that in a recent article in the UBC, uh, where we talk about the financial investments, the bricks and mortar, the uh, hiring of a chief uh, health officer. Um, and so we've tried to anticipate that need to be there for our students. To change gears entirely. You spend a lot of time walking on the campus, yeah. talking to people, taking photos. Why has that been a priority for you, getting out and about and meeting people and, and being of this place? Well, it's really important, I think, to talk to people about their experiences on the campus, to get the real view of what it's like to be a faculty member, staff member, or student. And so that's why I made the time to do that, and I still do, do that today. I'm really proud of the campus. I don't know if you've noticed that there are about eight cranes around campus. I'm very excited. Um, we, we're having a new School of Biomedical Engineering building um, that's, that's, that's going up right now. The Gateway building will be a new home for the School of Nursing and Kinesiology. 
um, Brock Commons too. Um, there's a beautiful art center, um, and also about 600 new uh, residence hall uh, rooms for students. Once again, something we've really tried to, to tackle. I don't know if you remember when I first arrived, there were thousands of students on a waiting list. Desperate to get to student housing. And we, and we have built thousands of new uh, residence halls, rooms, in, in starting with Orchard Commons and Tollwood to all the, all the new dormitories around Gage Towers and also two residence halls in the Okanagan campus. So I'm really proud of that focus on, on housing for students, faculty and staff, probably more than there's ever been. Uh, but it's much needed to really support the core academic and research mission of both campuses. I want to talk about a couple of personal things on the campus. Um, you were just awarded a entry into the UBC Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah. First president to have that. And you were really touched. You were actually oh. verklempt when they made that announcement to you. Why did that touch you so deeply? Well, you know, it's a privilege to have served this institution. and. You know, I've been crying several times over the past couple of weeks uh, because UBC matters a lot to me and, and the people of the university matter a great deal to me. And so I was to it was totally unexpected. Uh, and, you know, for me to be in the UBC Sports Hall of Fame, talk about Im imposter syndrome. You, you know, we have some extraordinary athletes over the century that... Uh, well, what am I doing there? But uh, when someone does something nice like that, when you least expect it, it's, it's very emotional. There's a plaque to your father that was unveiled on this campus. What was it like to know that there's going to be a permanent monument that has his name on it right here on the campus? Yeah, I go visit that uh, plaque on a regular basis. Um, and I was uh, speaking actually to a group of students the other day. And um, some of them had um, babies and toddlers and I looked at those babies and that was me and I was actually speaking to these students in Acadia Park where I was actually where I lived on President's Row and that's where the plaque is and um, it means a lot to me because um, the fact that this university extended a faculty position to my father making it possible for us as an immigrant family who traveled here with just two suitcases to build our lives here is something that will always be special to our entire family. And so I go back there every now and then to remember what UBC means to me and to my family. When I, saw, I showed a photograph of that plaque and that, that stone to, to my parents, they were moved beyond description. And so it'll always mean a lot to us. You're going to be a little closer to them. Um, being in Michigan, they're just in Baltimore. What's it going to be like for you to be able to be close enough to get there in a day if you need to? What was really the biggest reason why I'm leaving is to be near them. They were there for me for six decades of my life. They need me. And they're living alone. And Wendy's mother's living alone. And it's simply impossible for me to get there if something happens. And increasingly things happen. And so I hope people understand that uh, I'm a son first. Um, a son-in-law first, um, and I need to take care of them. How can you take Romeo away from his backyard? He's going to miss this place too. Oh, absolutely. He's going to be completely surprised. He's going to say, why is it snowing all the time in Ann Arbor? Um, I have to tell you, the one thing is that there are a lot of coyotes here, so he can't just like run around in the backyard by himself. He'll be pretty careful. But he's loved um, all the walks uh, through Pacific Spirit Park and you know, along Museum of Anthropology. What are you going to miss the most about being at the University of British Columbia? Yeah, first and foremost are the people. I'm going to miss working with the faculty, staff, and students like you. Um, you know, it's been incredible um, what we've done together. And, um, and those friendships will endure. And even though I'll be further away, uh, everyone will be welcome in our house, uh, which is not ready yet in Michigan. And I'll look with great pride at um, the buildings that, that are under construction. I wish I was here to see them open, but I'll be applauding and cheering from afar. Um, I'll miss, um, you know, shaking the hands of students that I've been with uh, who, are, who have yet to graduate or who are coming back for graduation. Um, I'll miss cheering for the Thunderbirds and for the heat and uh, just this beautiful, uh, the most beautiful campus on earth, which is UBC. I'll miss all of those things. So I can't, I can't choose one thing. I hope that's okay.
I saw a very tight hug between you and the Chancellor. What advice has he given you as you get set to depart? Well, Stephen Point's a very special person. I've had remarkable conversations with him. Um, I think he truly cares about the university. He truly cares about the work we've done with the Indigenous Strategic Plan. Um, I think he feels a great responsibility as Chancellor because he's staying longer than I am to make sure that that focus and the progress that we made continues. I think he cares about me as a person, which I will forever be grateful for. And I have to tell you that I had the exact same kind of feeling uh, from Lindsay Gordon, the previous chancellor. So, you know, we're very fortunate to have Stephen Point as our chancellor. And so I think that hug, that embrace, for me meant two things. One was a recognition of our partnership. And second was a moment where we felt um, a kind of shared responsibility for this amazing institution. So I think that's why that happened. Santa, thank you so much for sitting down with me once again. I, I, I hope that uh, my continued engagement um, and following everything that happens um, will show how much I love the place. And that goes for Wendy and my family as well. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.